Hi, let's do a finishing of the new All Jarred Up. This is the first one, which is Hello My Pretties. And here is the second one, which is Hello Santa. So I'm gonna show you how to finish it so that you can switch it out with washers and magnets. So if you're finishing your piece on this board, this was from Hobby Lobby. And there is the number, if you can read that. I'm not sure if it'll be backwards or not, but we can list it. It's listed on the chart. But I put this on here with magnets and washers so that I can change it out and even the bow is on a magnet. So we will go through all of that today and I'm gonna tell you what supplies you need. So I'm using three pieces of sticky board I, and I just cut these with my guillotine trimmer, which is the tonic guillotine trimmer and I use this for all my sticky board. The sticky board comes like this. We get our packages from Fat Quarter Shop. It's self-stick mounting board for needlework, but we've termed it sticky board. So then you need the three pieces of the sticky board cut to the first one is six by eight, seven by nine, and eight by 10, which you don't have to cut because it comes in that size. Now, if you don't wanna do three layers, you don't have to do three layers, but this is, I'm showing you how I'm doing mine. I'm also using the Lori Holt Vintage Trim in Cloud in the bigger size. Some ribbons, which I have not fully determined. A piece of wire, this is fabric cover wire that I use to make my bows. And I think I'm gonna use this in the center of the bows, but I haven't fully decided yet. I also brought up some picks to hopefully stick a little bit of this frosted boxwood with this flocked greenery. I know this came from Hobby Lobby and I think that this was from Walmart last year. And then if you need fabric, I'm using the Chelsea's Checks, which is a small of our fabric. And then the Priscilla's Pretty Plaids in the red and white also. And of course, a glue gun, glue sticks. And I think that that's it. And some washers, which I forgot to bring up, but I will get them when we get to that part. And magnets. Well, the magnets are already on the board, so. If they didn't do it. Okay. <laughs> and Chelsea says you need magnets. So I'm starting with the eight by 10 sticky board and I'm using the bigger of the check fabrics. And I'm gonna peel the top off of this. And if my nails are dirty, I'm sorry, I scrubbed them, but we went pumpkin picking yesterday and we were dirty. <laughs> so I like to line it up in the lighter red and try to get it as even as possible. Your car is orange color. Your monster, and then just smooth it out before I glue it on the back. I'm gonna flip it back over again, and I probably have that's probably an inch and a half. And I'm going to fold up the corners 90 degrees, put a little bit of glue, and do that on all four sides. Pull tight, but not tight enough to pull the, the corner right. through the fabric. Just snug. And just make sure it's straight across this way because that'll make your corners easier to make flat. Sharp. Sharp. So I'm going to fold up the bottom and just smooth it. These parchment paper sheets are for the birds. They're great for cookie sheets though. Fold up the top. And then I'm gonna do all the sides. And for all those questions about what kind of glue gun I use, it's the Shervander. I just ordered myself a new one from our Amazon shop because mine is a mess. Okay, 
So that looks good. And now I'm gonna do the corners. I'm just gonna stick a little bit of glue in each corner and just squeeze it with my fingers. You can go in at this point if you want and trim off some of this excess. You don't have to, but you can. And now we're gonna do the second board. This is the Chelsea's Chucks fabric. Our stripes should be out pretty soon. And then the seven by nine board. There's a little tiny corner on this that I need to All right, so then I'm gonna to try to line this up. The smaller checks are harder. And then just let it drop. Mama! I wanna go home. <laughs> I wanna go home. Cash is upset because his game is dead, so. <laughs> He's wanting to leave the building. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. We're, we're gonna fold up each side. Chelsea had to shut the light off too because she said there was a glare. So hopefully you can see it all good enough. And then start with the, that hurt? the two smaller ends. It's a good idea to have a little cup of ice water by you when you're doing this so you don't burn yourself. So there we go with that. And then we're gonna do the corners the same way where we just put a little bit of glue and squeeze, pinch. You can also use all this if you're just finishing this on its own and not switching your things out. I mean, it's the same process to put it on a different thing that you're not gonna switch out. except for when we get to the magnets and washers. All right, so there's the two boards. And I'm gonna lay that on there. And then I'm going to take my vintage trim. And I want it like stuck halfway under. And I'm leaving about an inch on the ends for gluing under. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this down where I want it, but I'm not gonna go to the very, very edges because then I can stick the the vintage trim underneath it. So I'm gonna go about an inch in, or half an inch in some places. And then I'm gonna find the center, hopefully. You can measure all that if you are one of those people. <laughs> And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it halfway under. Hopefully my theory on this works. I'm 
just gonna put a little tiny bit of glue and try to hurry and stick this under before. People could also glue it to the back of the... Right. Um, if you wanted to, you could glue it along the back of the top piece there and then flip it all over and then glue everything down. Just half of the width out. And then you could, um, you can also, like if you see parts where it's not stuck under enough or you don't think it's stuck down enough, you can take your glue gun before you glue the end down and like put a little bit of glue and push it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna glue the ends down. If you don't put a lot of glue on it, you can, um, you have a lot of options to fix your mistakes if you see any. All right, and then I'll do the other side. I just put a little tiny bit of glue. Put a little bit, tiny bit at each end. And then flip it over. Okay, so you're all set. There's your finishing piece. So now I am going to mount the stitching on the sticky board and if you want to use batting, you can use batting. I did not use batting on my witch. Yeah, you need to take my needles out. I did not use batting on the witch, but Okay, so I'm going to turn this upside down and I have I'm going to cut a little bit more off the bottom. Yes, that's the back. Did you say you pressed it already? Yes. Okay. Or no, maybe we didn't. We talked about the finishing fabric. I did iron it. So we do iron ours. We do stitches face down on a white cloth and just run an iron on it. Uh, sometimes we'll use steam too if we need to. Okay. So the sticky board for this one is six by eight, stitched on 28 count or 14 count if you stitch on 14 count. And she doesn't like leaving a lot of border on her stitched piece. So typically she's trying to butt up right next to the stitches. Okay, so I'm gonna go underneath. I don't know if you can see that really well. Mm -hmm and try to get it straight and just let it drop. And I've got it a little bit more up at the top than I do at the bottom, so I'm gonna move it. You just flip it over and fold the pieces down without sticking anything yet to make sure that it's even. If it's not, peel it right back up. All right, so we're gonna try this one more time. And this time I'm gonna go from the top and find where I want it to be. And then drop it. And now the top and the bottom are pretty much even. But the side isn't.
And if you don't want to use sticky board on your finished piece, you could always lace this, but use yes. a sticky board for your fabric pieces. Or use batting yep. underneath, and then you don't have to worry about the sticky board. We use regular batting. We don't use black batting. We've never had an issue with it. Okay, so you just want to play with it, fold the sides under and make sure it's straight. And we're good. So now we're going to do the exact same thing. Glue up the corners. And then it's a good idea to check and make sure that everything is good before you continue. So now I'm going to glue the bottom. And by checking to see if everything is good, just fold it back with your hands. And you do the two ends and then the sides instead of going around? I do, yes, I do the top and the bottom. So I've glued down the two ends and then the one side and I'm doing the last side. Sometimes the stitching fabric takes a little bit more to press down. All right, and then you can see that my corners are not good, so I'm gonna have to turn it over and do the same thing where I stick a little bit of glue in each corner to get pointy corners. This one you need to be mindful. You don't wanna use a lot of glue because you don't want it to ooze out under your stitching. Yes. Okay, so I got all four corners pinched and put into place. And you can see they look so much better. And sometimes like if they don't look good, even after you get done with that, you can take your fingers and just like pinch them and form them. But there's the Santa. So now he's gonna get glued onto the backing boards. So cute, I love the red checks with it. All right, so I'm gonna put glue about a uh, half an inch from the edge. You don't wanna get it too close because you don't want it to ooze out and you don't wanna use too much either. And some of these corners, if you didn't trim off any of the fabric, you can put a little bit of glue under there and then when you press it all down, it'll stay. This is hard because this counter is up high. Does it look even from up there? And there looks to be more on the top than there is on the bottom. Now, this is budget friendly because we're only using one finished piece, finishing piece. But if you wanted to make it more budget friendly, you could also use a more neutral, like our black and white check, right? Oh, and just... Just replace the stitching each yeah. time if you wanted to make it more neutral. But I like, I mean, these are easy to store just as is because you can take this whole piece off. It's flat and then store it with the bow. Okay, so then I'm going to... Just show you what it'll look like on here. And then I'm gonna make the bow. Cute. That looks really cute with the black checks. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, so we're gonna make the bow now. And because I'm going to use this big, this is an ornament from Hobby Lobby, because I'm gonna use this in the center, I'm gonna go with this two and a half inch ribbon for the base. Wire? Yes, it's wired. So first of all, I'm gonna cut a piece like that. And then I'll, I'll trim the ends in a minute. I'm going to make a loop like this. And this is probably it's 
six inches from here to there. So that would be 12 inches of ribbon. And then another one on the other side. And you need just enough that you can, when you wrap your wire around this, that all the edges will catch. And I'm making this one pretty big because this is pretty big. Then so you can adjust yours for right. what you're using. So then I'm going to set this down because I'm going to add another ribbon. Those are my wire cutters. And I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to do a loop that is a little bit shorter than this. Do we have a roll for that? No. Where did you get it? Huh? It's Where'd from you? Hobby Lobby. Okay. So that we are like half an inch shorter on each end. And then I'm going to take my floral wire and I'm going to put all three of these pieces together. So your flat piece and then the two looped pieces. And I'm going to take it because this is so wide of a ribbon and I'm going to twist it. This one needs to come down more. And if you make a mistake, the, because you're using wire, you can just untwist it and you can also use a pipe cleaner for this. I use a pipe cleaner a lot too. And I don't know where I got this wire from. I've had it for like 47 years. You've also used floral wire, right? Yep. Okay, so this bow is not going to be like really poofy because we have that big flat thing going in there. Then I'm going to trim the ends into a V shape. And I'm just checking to see how it looks. Do we like that? For this board, we also found that the chalkboard really absorbs oil. So we would make sure before you're touching that, that your hands are super clean. Mm -hmm. The sides of it get like, no matter if you've just washed your hands, you can see your fingerprints. Yeah. So you could always take a, a chalk and draw on here too yeah or even take the chalk and wipe it on there and then rub it off all right so before we attach the bow i'm going to put my washers on here because of how heavy this piece is there's three pieces of sticky board you're going to need to use a good amount of magnets so she used six to make sure it doesn't these are fall. the washers that i use so they are fender washers, five sixteenths inch uh, by one and a quarter. They're zinc plated so that they stick. And they can't be like solid zinc because it doesn't stick. Stainless steel sticks. So how I do this is I put them on the magnets on the piece. Just slap them on. Then I carefully take my glue gun and do a circle around each one. And you gotta work fast. Or you could actually do it like the top two and then stick your piece on and then do the next two. This is where it's important to have a hot glue gun. Those mini guns aren't gonna be hot enough for this to. Then lay this on the top and just push down. Everything needs to be lint rolled. All right, so there it is without the bow. And I'm gonna do the bow right now. And it's so nice when you already know how you're gonna finish your piece to just be able to switch it out. And then, you know, you get a little Rubbermaid tin to put this stuff in and you have your, your piece ready. So it's so nice to have your piece that you know that you're going to switch things out on that it's all ready to go and you just you don't need to go hunt for a piece you already have the piece you just put the magnets or the washers on there and then the bow is going to get a washer too i'm trying to decide i think i want another piece of ribbon underneath that's longer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to untwist this and add another piece of ribbon which you can do and it's not a problem does the greenery get added before or after the greenery gets added after the bow is done and 
then we'll add the greenery. Yeah, you're right. So maybe so I don't. It. Right. Okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that because I forgot we were doing greenery because this has to stick out. Mm -hmm. These are only ninety nine cents, so that's a good deal. All right. I was just looking at this because this one's like stuck together. That's an important thing too. Fluff your greenery because it wants to be fluffed. For some reason this one looks way smaller. All right. So now I'm going to have to cut these stems and that's why I brought my wire cutters up here. All right, so those are gonna go underneath. I'm gonna look at this on here. Oh, that looks pretty. And then we're gonna add some of the green. And I chose this green because the greens that we used in the stitching are like not real, they're a little bit lighter. So this um, boxwood that's got the sparkles on it will be perfect. And I'm going to use my handy dandy wider wire cutters again and cut two sprigs off. So now we're going to layer this all together. And I'm going to take another piece of that wire and just wrap it as tight as I can. And I'm gonna go around a couple of times because this is pretty thick. And then like twist it in the back again. And that little black chalkboard piece will cover this up. And it looks like I'm getting it all twisted up, which I can fix as soon as I get this done. All right, so I'm twisting it like five times. And I leave the ends along at first in case I need to go in there and undo it that it's easy to do. All right, so there you can see your bows all done. Now I'm going to add this, which I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna to try to use it on the top. I'm just gonna tie this in a knot. And I'm gonna glue it to the very top and then I'm gonna trim the ends. So fold it, you usually fold it in half and then you cut you can, upwards on an angle? You can, and most of the time I don't do that. I just like cut it in a V. But that'll look really cute up at the top. And I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of glue and center it. And the nice thing about this parchment paper is if the glue gets on there, I can peel it right off. All right, and now I'm going to glue it onto the center of my bow. That looks cute. And I'm putting kind of a lot of glue on there to make sure it'll stay. And there's your bow, all finished. And then you can play with the greenery if it's not in the right spot. That's straight.
Okay, so now I'm going to add a washer to the back of this. And if I feel like the one magnet and washer is not strong enough because this is a lot, then I'll add a second magnet to the top of my piece and I'll add two washers. But I'm gonna try it with one washer. Glue. Stick it on there. And there you go. You're done. Do you think you need two or one? One is going to hold it, but I need more glue. Now, if it were on a door or something, on the back of a door, I would probably do two. If there's a lot of motion where this is going to be. You hold this for a little while before you go to stick it on there. Yeah, the glue cool. And I could probably trim these to ease up on a little bit of weight. Oh. And I don't see one on the other side that's up long. All right. Is that in the center? Or does it need to be moved? Yeah. All right, let's try it again. There you go. And then you can take chalk and put in the amount of sleeps till Christmas. Yep, I put 25 there and then I Smash immediately it. stuffed my hand in it and so again, this is all jarred up. Hello, Santa. This is going to be the second in the series. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way. If you're just starting with this one, this would be the first way to finish it. And then you can swap it out if you've already stitched Hello, My Pretties. The finishing piece is available at Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. The item number is on the back of the charts. Okay. So thanks for finishing your project with us. And we hope you learned something. And if not, then... <laughs> We also wanted to mention with these jars, we have found that it is a little tedious to um, not fill in the letters. So this time on this one, oops, yep. fuck that fly. <laughs> so in the, the first one, I planned the, the writing on the jar to be totally different. And once I got it done, I told Chelsea, I hate it. I can't, I have to rip it out. And then I like restitched part of the blue on the jar and decided that the black because she couldn't read the words. The black showing through, you could read the words. So this time I stitched it with black coffee. The last time I stitched it in white and then cut it out. And <laughs> But this time, this is black coffee stitched the Hello Santa so that it was easier to fill in the jar afterwards. Yes. Okay, so what I was saying is for this one, the, the words are going to be filled in. But if you're stitching Hello My Pretties, the chart doesn't reflect the letters being filled in with black coffee so to make it easier for stitching and counting where you could just take this with you in the car and be able to fill in the jar you could just fill in the letters with black, black coffee, coffee if you have it laying around is i guess what i'm saying but for hello santa it's going to be charted to fill it in with that black coffee um, i had mentioned maybe using dmc but if you're stitching on black fabric you're not going to be able to see that dmc well enough 310 310 dmc 310 but if you stitch on that chalkboard black ada you could use dmc 310 and you'd be fine yes but i used black coffee and i think it looks amazing so there so, you go hello santa this is um October's release and coming to a shop near you soon. Yep.